address the council will be called on at the appropriate time. That muted. To make your comments, uh, if there are any students in the attendance and we aren't done by nine o'clock, we'll take a short break and sign your form so you can go home. I don't anticipate that being an issue this evening. Uh, will the clerk please call the roll? Thank you, Mayor Sports. Councilmember Lombardi. Present. Councilmember Scott. Councilmember Myers. Present. Councilmember Martinez. Present. Councilmember Fancher. Present. Deputy Mayor Madewell. Present. Mayor Swartz. Present. OK, at this time we'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. OK, does any council member wish to move a consent agenda item to a business item for individual individual discussion and vote or make other modifications uh, for tonight's agenda? Mr. Fancher. Yeah, um, I would like to. Uh, what the heck number is it? Um, it's the path um, G. I'd like to move G off the consent agenda item for discussion. OK. And do we have to. Vote on just that amendment or we can. Make a motion. OK. So. Perfect. Huh? OK, all those in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion passes. OK, um, let's see. I'm going to make an announcement at this point. Uh, issued. Oh, we didn't have a second. I thought that's that's exactly what I was asking oh. if we were doing both at the same time. So OK, sorry. We have a motion. Did we get a Mo second? Second. I'll second it. OK, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Pretty sure the motion passes. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, next up, I will announce that. Uh, is there a purpose why we didn't have that as part of the mayor's report, Kevin? What's that? The, the announcement for the prayer breakfast. Uh, no, it just came in yesterday. OK, I'm just so, reading linearly down. the. Yeah, she, she dropped those off yesterday morning. Thank you. All right, I do have a flyer here. The Kiwanis Mayor's Prayer Breakfast is on Tuesday, May 7th at 7 a.m. at Pillar Rock Grill. Uh, and I would like to know how many council members uh, will plan to attend that day. Uh, that would be Tuesday, May 7th at 7 a.m. I, I plan to attend. OK, so can we just get a show of hands for the clerk, please? Who plans to attend? Thank you. What's that? That's exactly why we're we're doing this, so it will be announced per law that there will be a, a quorum of council members there, so it technically is a public meeting. But OK. Um, all right, then. Does council wish to have any business brought to a future meeting? Seeing as there are none, uh, we'll move on to the city manager's report. Kevin? Uh, Mayor, uh, uh, the agenda, uh, excuse me, the citizen communication items, are those for agenda items? Because we, we seem to have skipped that. <laughs> Sorry. OK, we'll do citizen communications at this point. I'm sorry, I, don't, I was one page ahead. Uh, the council invites citizen comments to hear from the public on matters before the council or relevant to the council's business. The council values free expression of all points of view as an important democratic value in this community. Each speaker is allowed a maximum of five minutes or is otherwise determined. If others have already expressed your views, you may simply indicate that you agree with the previous speaker. The council expects respect for those who have positions with which one may disagree, so debate or interactive discussions are strictly prohibited. Please refrain from a 
applause after each speaker only address your comments to council and not to staff or the audience. Council may request staff research comments received for a potential future action. Please take private conversations outside. When you are called to speak, please begin with stating your name and city of residence for the record. Uh, we have one person this evening, uh, Lisa Deluji. If it pleases the council, Elysia Deluji, Lisa from Moses Lake. Um, I was hoping that maybe one of you guys could look into the uh, Larson Field parking lot where the ice skating rink is because they actually blocked off one of the entry exits and it's kind of a safety issue. So all the people, if there's an emergency there, there's only one exit where there should be two and it's it's just blocked off. And I don't know why it's blocked off, but um, in the uh, all safe storage and the desert oasis there, we only have one place that we can exit and that would be con and if there's an emergency that would congest that whole area and it actually would perpetuate uh, more of a problem so I, I don't understand the reason and rationale and I think of safety on big terms and so I was hoping that maybe one of you guys could look into that matter for me and we could get it resolved and hopefully um, that safety issue will be uh, eliminated please and thank you I think uh, Councilmember Myers had a comment on this. Are you talking about the uh, big metal yellow piece yeah, going across? Yeah, and what I've noticed is even when, because um, the um, baseball field's right there, when people bring their kids for the games and practice, they're parking up and down the street because they're pulling in in the back area versus going all the way around to get into um, that through that that um, front entrance area. So that whole street's being full of cars and then the parking lot's not being utilized because they can't get in and out. And that's their entry point. Like if they live up by Sage and stuff, that's where they come in from. And if you go one block up, it's that's the um, like, okay, so here's a parking lot and then here's housing. And then this next street, you take that street and there's the parking lot for the BMX bikes. So it just doesn't make sense. And it is definitely a safety issue for me and all my residents. I'm in agreement. Um, I've always wondered why that's been blocked off. It used to not be. And then last summer it got blocked off. We, we can look at it tomorrow. I'll have staff go over there and take a look at it. Thank you. And then another thing that I would like to address to the council is that we have three battery plants and I noticed that there's only two battery plants up there. Um, one D is missing. So we have Sela and we have 12 and then we have the Mormon church and I don't have anything against churches or religions, but if you, if it was a Catholic, you know, saint, if it was a Christian cross, it just opens up the door that of religious stuff that we just don't even want to deal with those kinds of headaches. Um, but I would at least like to see a matching motif. If we have three battery plants, there should be all three of them up there in honor and respect for all of them. And so if you guys could consider that and look into that, that would be really awesome. Okay. So good news. Um, Biden's infrastructure and clean energy investments by state. We are actually, Washington State is in the lower portion of receiving funds. We're looking at places that are getting 10 billion, 46 billion, 478 billion, 13 million, 1.52 billion, 39 billion, 75 billion, 20 billion, 478 billion, 20 billion, 27. 688 billion, 60 billion, 120 billion. Most of them are grants. Some of them are loans and rebates. And I'm going to go ahead and give this information over to Kevin um, so that he can have those numbers because there's no reason why we shouldn't be getting billions. And then this hasn't been manifested yet, but it will in the next year. And I already talked to Dave Sands and I'm grateful for his um, cooperation and wanting to work with me. But um, we're looking at the state dishing out $100 million in grants for police, local, for the smaller agencies. Um, this last year, they focused on the Washington State Patrol, and we got a whole bunch of new WSPs. But now um, they're looking at, like I said, hopefully it's not public. 
and it hasn't been manifested. So this is like an inside scoop, but they're looking at the, for the smaller municipalities and, and local police for uh, police training and police officers. And so Dave had um, brought up some um, very important and crucial questions um, for me to further inquire with regards to if it's one time, if it's for like three years, is this going to be an annual amount of money for us to consider? And I'd also like to look at the possibility because if, if it's going to be something that's going to be happening, if we can get some sort of reimbursement grants for the smaller municipalities that might need um, they might need the help now versus within the next year when we can actually put it on paper and get it signed. But it, it will for sure be a done deal. So we have at least a year to start looking at what exactly do we need and put a priority list of a wish list um, that I would like to see um, you guys, um, you guys his opinions so that I can get those to the ears of the people that are making those decisions, please. And thank you. Do you guys have any questions? I don't know. Anybody else? No, I will say with the amount of growth and specifically in the industries that we're experiencing growth in, you know, we hope to see some outside help. So I appreciate the, the insight on that. Thank you. Yeah, and then I'll be meeting with um, it might just, I don't know yet if it's going to be an interactive Zoom or more of a listening session, but the general manager, Chris Delina, for the IMF, that's the Worldwide Bank, and I have already been participating in meetings where we're looking at $500 billion for worldwide stuff. So those might be some future funds that we could tap into as well. But these are national, so I'll get those over to Kevin. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, that concludes the citizen comment section. And I apologize again, I did start on the second page. So we'll go back a little bit here. Uh, the mayor's report, that is me. Uh, the library week proclamation I have here. <clears throat> uh, whereas libraries offer the opportunity for everyone to connect with others, learn new skills and pursue their passions no matter where they are on life's journey. And whereas libraries have long served as trusted institutions striving to ensure equitable access to information and services for all members of the community, regardless of race, race, ethnicity, creed, ability, sexual orientation, gender identity, or socioeconomic status. And whereas libraries adapt to the ever-changing needs of their communities, developing and expanding collections, programs, and services that are diverse as the populations they serve, and whereas libraries are accessible and inclusive places that promote a sense of local connection, advancing understanding, civic engagement, and shared community goals, and whereas libraries play a pivotal role in economic development by providing resources and support for job seekers, entrepreneurs, and small businesses, thus contributing to local prosperity and growth, and whereas libraries make choices that are good for the environment and make sense economically, creating thriving communities for a better tomorrow. And whereas libraries are treasure, treasured institutions that preserve our collective heritage and knowledge, safeguarding both physical and digital resources for present and future generations, and whereas libraries are an essential public good and fundamental institutions in democratic societies working to improve society, protect the right to education and literacy, and promote the free exchange of information and ideas for all. And whereas libraries, librarians, and library workers are joining library supporters and advocates across the nation to celebrate National Library Week. And now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Dustin Swartz, Mayor of the City of Moses Lake, do hereby proclaim National Library Week, April 7th through the 13th, 2024. During this week, I encourage all residents to visit their library and celebrate the adventures and opportunities they unlock for us every day. Ready, set, library. Okay, next up, and I'm glad we went back because this is very important. We have an airport commission appointment. Um, former airport commissioner Darren Jackson has submitted a letter requesting reappointment for the remainder of term he had resigned from in 2023. I recommend appointing Mr. Jackson for the unexpired term due to expire next on December 31st, 2026. I would accept a motion to approve the appointment. 
So moved. So moved. <laughs> yeah. Okay, one of you gets to be the second. <laughs> we'll draw straws. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Congratulations, sir. Thank you very much for your service. Okay, at this point, I will announce to everybody that the Qantas... Uh, never mind, we've already done that. Okay, moving on. Uh, Kevin, you are now up. <laughs> Mayor, I have nothing. Thank you, though. <laughs> 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 okay, well, that was awesome. Okay, so uh, uh, we're moving on to the consent agenda at this point, uh, with the exception of item G, which has been removed. I would accept a motion to approve the consent agenda. I move that we accept the consent agenda um, as presented, except for G. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Okay, shall we just go ahead and do item G now then? Is that appropriate? We'll, we'll do item G now. Uh, sure. Okay, so item G is the, do we have someone to present this for the WSDOT Sandy Williams Communities Program Grant? So Levi is not here. Uh, okay. To speak to that, it was a grant that was received by the city of uh, $2 million to design and build a walking path between uh, Grape Drive and Patton Boulevard on the north side of 17 so that people that were uh, walking south from side. the base wouldn't walk. South, south side. Oh, oh, sorry, south side. I thought it was on the north. Okay. So that they wouldn't walk uh, along the highway and it would give them a, a path to walk where they wouldn't be in direct conflict with. Uh, traffic. Okay, and it's a two million dollar grant. Two million dollars for design. matching funds, though. Correct. I, I don't believe there's no. There's no match. I didn't believe there was matching funds. I think it's just that's the design and build cost for the entirety of the for the entire for that one mile stretch of the walking path. Okay. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Kind of remember this from a long time ago. The the there was quite a bit of work done on, on rail on, on trails and paths. Um, I'm trying to figure out, and I get the part from Grape to Patton, and you say it's on the south side. And then how do you get them north? At the crosswalk at Patton and Highway 17. Okay. <laughs> but but I I and I know we have. So we have some studies also going in at Stratford Trek also. So I guess where I'm at it is we've got a lot of big bites, transportation, water. Um, we've we are having some future study sessions and, and meetings and regarding the budget and priorities. Um, before we go um, accept two million dollars from the state with I'm not 100% sure all the conditions of that and what the future cost of maintaining and connecting to it. I'd like to just put a pause on it if it's possible, maybe table this. We have some meetings coming up to talk about, um, I guess what I would say, uh, hopefully prioritizing where we're spending our monies because even if there's a path there just for that, we got to connect at some point somehow um, this. Um, I'm not against it. I just want to understand it better and then talk about where where the additional funds and connections might be. Um, we have some big projects coming. So if there's a possibility to kind of do this, that'd be great. Thank you, uh, Council Member Martinez. So the south side is the Home Depot side, right? Because I'm a woman, of course, and we don't know north, south. You did uh -huh. get it correct. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure everybody knew that it was the Home Depot side. Um, is there a time frame to accept or decline the grant? I can't answer that, but what I can say is that if you wanted to table it to the next meeting, I could have Levi here and he could maybe uh, speak a little bit more to it. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Myers. Never mind. If we're going to have Levi here next meeting, then we'll wait till then. Okay, yeah, it sounds to me like people just want a little more info on this before we proceed. Mr. Skog. 
Is there a deadline for accepting or not accepting? <laughs> I, just, I, I, I don't know the answer to that. Thinking of that. OK, so it sounds to me like there's a motion. I would like to see us table it until the next meeting. OK, is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes for item G. Moving on to new business number two, which is downtown parking regulations amendment ordinance 3046, uh, which is presented by Kevin Fear. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'll make this quick. Uh, you saw in the packet I updated the um, parking ordinance downtown. The only two hour parking, uh, if the council approves it tonight, would be uh, on third between Division and Ash, and then also west of Ash, about 100 feet. So basically, the parallel parking in front of Red Door and the parallel parking in front of Sinkayu Square. That would only be that would be the only two hour parking downtown. Everything else in the downtown area, everything else uh, west of the downtown area uh, would go to four hour parking. Um, I learned. Oh, oh, and I I also had language in the uh, code that says that uh, during special community events, and I, I I wanted to clarify that it's special community events that that parking ordinance would not be in effect. Uh, that way, if we had pancake breakfast or the uh, cowboy breakfast or, you know, more of or something downtown that it wouldn't apply. Um, I talked to streets department about painting lines in the parallel areas. Uh, they are actually painting as we speak. And so uh, Brad said that they could easily use their walk behind painter and paint those lines. Um, I had two communications last week with the PUD. Uh, I was told that they have actually replaced bulbs in uh, to LED bulbs in 10 of those decorative lights. However, they weren't able to tell me which 10. So they're supposed to get me a list of the 10 that were changed so that we can at night see what the difference is. There might be some other opportunities to change uh, to a brighter bulb if, if that's the desire, but it would take changing ballasts and some other things too. So th there's more to it than just bulbs if it needs to be brighter than that. Um, what else did I have? I had a note, but my note the got a sign component. Of it. Oh, yes. It OK, so there are 400 parking signs downtown. 400. The cost to pull those down, skim off the old uh, graphic, put in a graphic, coat them twice and repost them is about 200 bucks a sign. Uh, so what we talked about, what I talked to Brad about is, is the two hour parking. We want to make sure that the signs stay up because that is designated to our parking. The rest of them we can either leave up or we can take down right now and then phase or do the change maybe over the winter time. Frankly, do we really need to have four hour signs around the city with the ordinance written the way it is? I think we designate the two hour area, but he knows that the rest of them we just let go. Um, we have it in ordinance, so if somebody parks down there for an extended period of time, i.e. two or three days or, you know, overnight, we have the authority with code to be able to move those rigs. And so whether we want to spend the money on a bunch of signs downtown or not, or if we do want to put some signs down there, maybe we put 25% of the signs and we put 100 signs as opposed to 400 signs. So, uh, Mr. Myers. My question was going to be, since we've done all this work on the updating the code. What does enforcement look like? Because uh, mm -hmm. I know there are some people that want enforcement of the code. What does that look like? Are we going to be complaint driven or is it going to be habitual? We've noticed you've been here for way too long kind of thing. Uh, well, I'm tempted to say, unfortunately, the jail is still full, uh, but this you can't be arrested for parking, so I, I won't. But um, no, it would be exactly the same um, as we talked about before. There will be an ed educational process. There'll be um, warning notices given, and then if they're habitual offenders, um, we could, in theory, write tickets at that point, but not as a general rule. The education is always first. But it's going to be complaint driven. We don't have a full time person going looking for parking. So it's going to be if somebody says something. 
Yeah, if someone says something or if an officer ticks me off and they uh, need to walk the entire downtown uh, marking vehicles, <laughs> right. I, no, they, it will be complaint based. I, I would suggest that part of the reason for having the study session involving the Downtown Business Association was hopefully to keep them abreast of what's going on here and maybe have them involved. So I would think there would be some business outreach that will go along with this, I would hope. Maybe one of us can attend their next meeting um, to make sure everybody's on board, but probably a lot of that will will help. And I would assume that any of the complaints would come from that group of people also. So they're going to self-regulate, I would trust. Uh, Mr. Fancher. I just, just so I, I understand it. So, so we control parking on Broadway. Is that true? Even though we don't own it? I know there's two hour parking signs on Broadway right now. Yeah, I just was curious if, if we, but so it's our job to police it basically. Sorry, it's a state highway, but right. uh, we control it. Okay. Victor? Quick question for you. Um, Last meeting, I think it was Richard Law that said um, <clears throat> he wasn't sure as far as the length of the parking spots where we're drawing the lines. Um, you know, if they're going to be truck friendly or are they going to be kind of West Side style where? No, I will tell you this. He he projected about 25 feet per spot, which to me seems extremely big. <laughs> I, I would think that that's maybe too much. I, I'm thinking, I was thinking more maybe 15. 15 to 20 feet 20 yeah. so 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 I mean, parking, we, we, a parking we want, a yeah. parking stall in a parking lot is is nine by 20. Yeah. so we, we want to make it uh, like, user friendly for trucks but we also want to maximize the space okay so uh, i appreciate that yeah okay maximize the space diana uh, my preference i don't know if, if that was specifically said in this new ordinance um, is to take down all of the two hour parking signs that don't apply anymore. So as there's no confusion um, as, as to how long you can park. Um, and uh, as we talked about in the finance committee, um, I would prefer to um, update the signs uh, in the winter or slow time um, because I know that streets will be busy this, well, starting now. Um, although I haven't seen any potholes yet. <laughs> not not where I live <laughs> or I drive. So so he's you've got a little bit of time, extra time, I think. Anyway, that would be my preference. Okay. Looks like uh it, that's the end of the comments. I'll move to uh I'll make a motion to uh adopt uh ordinance three oh four six as presented. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Great. All right, number three is the cost of service study for water and wastewater, which will be presented by Ms. Prentice. Good evening. Um, so before you have a proposal from FCS group for a water and wastewater study, rate study, the last time that the rate study was done was in 2019. And as the bond presentation that we just received um, the last meeting or a couple meetings ago, it's required for us to go out for bonds. We have to have an updated water and sewer uh, waste uh, rate study. And so what we we reached out to FCS group and asked them to submit a proposal, which you have in the packet, um, to do that. The one thing that we did do, the initial proposal was just under $100,000, but it only included two scenarios or two potential rate um, structures per utility. We actually asked them to increase that to as many as five. In the event that you know we see two, two is just not going to work, we wanted options as well as we've also asked them to increase the user class um, so instead of like the last time they focused on residential and came up with the rates for residential we've asked them to expand that to include commercial industrial irrigation um, you know the nonprofits, the hospitals the schools that kind of thing as well um, so that we truly get a good idea of what the rate structure for all of those classes should be um, so the proposal that you have in front of you is 
what they're estimating. $107,000 is, is what it could potentially be if we don't need five different rate structures or we don't need as many meetings, that cost could go down, of course. Um, but we're just asking you to uh, consider approving. Um, we'll have to put together a contract, but this was just their proposal for the time being. Thank you, uh, Deanna. How often do we have to have these updates done? Usually they say every five to seven years. Um, of course, your bonding, if you depend, you know, when you're going out for bond, they like to have one every five years or within the last five years. OK, and the last one was done when? 2019. I guess that, I guess that is five years. Oh, good yeah. gracious. Um, secondly, uh, did we just go with the um, previous vendor or contract? person organization because of ease or well we did that because they're currently working with the wastewater group and the water group for the comp plan and so fcs group is already working with those two divisions for the comp plan analysis and so they're already going to be doing that financial analysis for those pieces of those comp plans um, as well as and i was trying to confirm this i haven't confirmed it yet i thought that the last time that they did the rate study they did send out an rfp they didn't get anyone responding other than FCS group. I'm going to confirm that, um, but that was my understanding okay. was that you just don't get a lot of companies that that have that kind of provide that kind of service to respond. OK, sounds good. I'd, I'd appreciate that update when when yeah. you have the time. I'll find that out. Thanks. Uh, Victor. Um, thanks for coming and explaining that. Uh, when we spoke this morning, you had mentioned um, that these take a while to put together and mm -hmm. for the public to know. You were saying somewhere like nine to 12 months to put together? They can, yes. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. So the so-called uh, expiration on them, let's say, um, Deanna asked the question roughly, you're thinking it's about five years mm -hmm. when we spoke. I remember something about a 20 year. Do you remember? That's for the, the analysis that they do. They go out for 20 years. Ah, okay. Yes. Got but it. as far as for the bonding agencies, they require a rate study within the last five years. Okay. Yeah. And um, within this report, um, it'll have like a number of different scenarios. Yes, that's right. Can you give an idea what that is just for some of the people out here? Well, when we say scenarios, so you might have different either tiered rate structures um, or you might have multiple levels um, that, that you can choose from as far as, you know, for example, we have four tiers right now. Um, they they can come back depending on what they find and they'll they'll say if you do this here's what it will pay for in the future using this rate structure if you went to this rate structure you could pay for these projects for this length of time so it will do that analysis and look at all of the projects as well as all the infrastructure that we need to continue to maintain and what it will require as far as a rates rate structure to to achieve those goals. Thank you. Uh, Don, just to give some historical background, in 2019 at the rate study, they uh, proposed a significantly higher rate than what we are currently at. And we went with a lesser rate to kind of stepping stone up and not shock the consumer. So we have the option. Yes. Just keep that in mind that when they make this proposal, we can adjust and adopt whatever we feel fits our community. Yep. Thanks, Don. OK, does anybody have any further questions? I accept a motion. So moved. Second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Moving right along, administrative reports. No, thank you, Mayor. We only have one, and it's with Parks and Rec. I actually have two for you. Oh, <laughs> glad. We're doubling up. To, we're trying to get out of here in record time. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm going to be quick. I only have 100 slides. The first one, I'm just... Um, I wanted to remind everybody that we are in brush chipping season. We have our brush chipping program going on now. This is week two of three. Uh, this week, we will be north of Western in Milwaukee to Pioneer Way to I-90, uh, Montlake, Guffin Eccles, downtown area, and Farmers Drive. 
And next week, April 15th to 19th, will be east of Pioneer Way and south of Wheeler Road to Highway 17 to I-90 Lakeview and Hayden Estates, south of Highway 17, and west of, west of Paxson Drive, Knowles Vista, Longview Tracks, Grove Terrace, and Gateway Estates. Um, if you have questions about what can be chipped, what needs to be out there, you can call our uh, Parks, Recreation, Cultural Services offices. Um, this flyer that is up there is posted on our Facebook page and available to the community. So uh, if you have stuff there, let us know and we can come and get it. Or, you know, in those areas, that's where we're going to be going. We do have a question already for you. Go for it. Deanna? Do we know how much it costs us when we do this? We actually have a grant. Uh, with the county that pays us staff time as well, 75% of staff time. And after this is done, I, will, I can get you a total as to what it actually cost us. That'd be great. Um, I do want to say that I am really appreciative of this program. As a single person without a truck um, and huge tree in my front yard and one in the neighbor's backyard, I have use this um, many times to the point where I don't need to use it this year, <laughs> but I appreciate it. Well, yeah, and all of the chipped material is used uh, in our parks as mulch throughout the park systems in different areas, depending upon the quality of the mulch. So we do take it out there. We, we do recycle this material. It is not just thrown in a landfill. Good. Thank you. Any other questions on that one? Okay. Second one I have for you is we had gone through last fall and council approved designs for two new parks at Longview uh, and at Sun Terrace. Uh, we have gone through the design process with the community in those two areas. We have preferred alternate designs coming back. I have rough ideas of those now, but we will be having a community open house held right here in this room on uh, Wednesday, uh, April 24th at 6 p.m. Um, and so I wanted to let you all know that. Uh, if I have the designs the night before for council, I will bring them here for council to review, um, but we will be reviewing the rough draft tomorrow night at Park Board. Park Recreation Cultural Services Board will review them and then we'll take them out to the community two weeks on Wednesday. And then I will be taking those designs and madly rapidly putting together grant applications that are due May 1st uh, to try and get uh, at least one of those parks, if not both of them, paid for with 90% grant dollars from the state and federal government. So that's the plan. Great, thank you, Doug. All right, I have one more thing, if you would. Yes, uh, regarding the uh, library proclamation that you read earlier, uh, we have Austin and Connie here from the library. I'm so sorry. When, when we get done, can we just get maybe a photo Absolutely. of them with thank you, you and the proclamation? Coming. Both for coming. Appreciate it. Thought I saw your name tag back there. So thank you. That's all I had. Thank you. Is that it? Okay. Moving on. Uh, Council committee reports. Council member Myers. Nothing to add. Thank you. Council member Martinez. Uh, nothing to add. Our finance committee meeting basically was our agenda, most or part of it. Um, public safety committee meeting. Both departments are doing great. So nothing to talk about right now. Hopefully you hear the good stuff as well as, you know, more than the bad stuff. Great, thank you. Uh, Council Member Fancher. Uh, it's been rather busy at uh, community development with uh, code update and the stakeholder committee. Um, we went from meeting every two weeks to meeting, I think, more than every week. <laughs> Doesn't it seem like more than once a week? Yeah, it does. Anyway, no, I think we're making some good headway and we're getting great still. This is one of the few committees that I don't feel like we've lost anybody. The committee has stayed intact and even added one or two to keep things rolling. So appreciate it. Great, thank you. Council member Lombardi or Scog will go with how about that? Other than missing lunch on some community development meetings, um, or at least late. Uh, that has been interesting just to feel that we can have a, a, ch a chance to impact how things get done, particularly as how things get developed. And uh, it's been fun to be part of that. And it's something that, you know, we've heard a lot of complaints or a lot of input on what needs to be done or what needs to be changed. And uh, there's a lot of people that are real responsive to that. And the community has been involved in that. And that'll be exciting to see how those things change and, and make things run smoother and maybe easier. Great, thank you, uh, Councilmember Lombardi. 
Um, well, the port of Moses Lake, uh, should I just hand it off to uh, Commissioner Jackson to no, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, But He's off the clock. <laughs> uh, we have a new executive director there, uh, Mr. Dan Roach, um, and apparently the um, the committee that was, or the, the candidates was a very, very strong field. So the expectations are pretty high on Mr. Roach since it was a very competitive uh, uh, decision. Um, a plane update, uh, the last few times it was kind of stayed in that 150 range. Now it's under 100 planes. So number of planes have been um, delivered and uh, cash checks are going to Boeing. Um, and then their particular TIF uh, is still at the state uh, in evaluation stage. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Madewell. I don't have anything, thank you. OK, that leaves me. I would just like to remind everyone that there is a s informational meeting next week. Is that? Debbie, I'm hoping you'll help me out for Sister City uh, Student Exchange. I think it's the 17th, correct? So uh, if any of you out there know of students who are between the ages of or grades of 8th grade and 11th grade, basically, and the flyer is online. I think we've put it on our Facebook page, so I'd encourage people to encourage young people to come out for that. It's a great program. With that, uh, I will announce the next regular meeting is April 23, and the meeting is adjourned at 7.13. Let's get on.